All right, everybody, let's take a look at the news. We got two weeks worth of news to look at oh. for you here. So let's start with the longest buildup to a company in a while, and that's <laughs> Dyzed. Because Dyzed has been pushing their wares for six plus years now. What they are is they are an online, well, like an app. So you can get it on your iPad and stuff. Where It's a tutorial for a game, but it will actually walk you through the game. Mm -hmm. um, so far, their initial offerings were, unfortunately, almost too easy. They had like Carcassonne and things like that. Well, I already, most people, you don't even need an app to teach you. But they did a Blood Rage one, which was pretty fantastic. The problem is it's hard to use dyes if you don't get publishers, and publishers don't want to use dyes unless people use it, so it's kind of a vicious circle. But we're starting to see more publishers have been announced. The entire tiny, well, not the entire, but a couple of the tiny epic things, Tiny Epic Pirates and Tiny Epic Dungeons are on it now, and more is coming, and Super Fantasy Brawl for Mythic Games is coming to that. So more and more companies starting to work with this. I like this idea, um, and I would like to see more of it happen, but unfortunately you have to kind of get that ball spinning before people are going to do it. So, yeah, I, I think this is a great spin. idea. Do you, <laughs> have you used it? I mean, does it, does it really, does it really work? Does it and and do I the publishers it at Essen a few years ago? Mm -hmm. do, do the publishers have to put work into it, or do, do they put the, like the publishers pay them and they do? I it? think the publishers pay them to do it because yeah. it is yeah, pretty yeah. time intensive. It's not just it's a tutorial, but it will be like okay, pass out the cards, everyone. So it's like something you can play during the game. It will say do this next, do that next. It's pretty cool. Right. I was very impressed with it, but at the same time, they had a lot of very easy games that I wouldn't use it for. A right. more complex game it would work great for. All right. We got a bunch of games to talk about. First of all, Quinted has a game called Animalia. This is a one to three cooperative trick-taking game. Wasn't there already a game called Animalia, Z? Yeah, but they specifically even say here this is not to be confused with the uh, Bruno Catala and Sebastian Pauschen <laughs> Animalia, which is a different game. Very light, cute game. Yes, I believe it's thing. the game that put repos on the map, right? Was it repos? No, it was. Hmm. Uh, no, that's the guys who put out Jamaica, that company. Sp not Space Cowboys. Um, I forget. One of those. It's a French company. I'll look it up now. Thanks, Tom, for giving me something. No, I didn't. Happens. I should have known that off the top of my head, but I, I couldn't remember. I just know that. that, that. Yeah, anyway, uh, this is a very stupid. different game. Why is these looking that up and grumbling? Game um, works. Gameworks, yes. Gameworks exists because of the original Animalia, which this has nothing to do with. So there's a dummy player in the game, which makes well, me depends. not want to play because I hate dummy players. Okay, well, I'll stop playing games with you then. I'm sorry. Win-win! But anyway. <laughs> wow. Wow. Z, uh, that's normally reserved for me, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, hey, man, you know. I don't partic but I don't particularly like dummy players in games, uh, but... If it's built in from the beginning, like it's not something that's just added in, maybe it's fine. Yeah, interesting. I gotta say, I don't love that cover though. It's it's one thing is one to three players. That's a very odd player count. But that I mean, interesting. I mean, you know, and it's trick taking, which you don't get usually. Well, there's enough well four player trick taking games. No, yeah, you don't. Right. Well, you don't normally get. You don't normally get two player trick taking games. There are some. You don't normally get one player, and to cap it at three is an interesting number. So the thing I'm most should... excited about, though, when it comes to this Animalia, it has a campaign mode. What? You got a campaign? It has a campaign mode. <laughs> a campaign mode? If you think uh... I'm kidding, it's right there oh, in our notes. It says it right there. Animalia oh. has a campaign mode where money earned spills over. From round to round. I, I, all right, all right. I'm not sure. Anymore. All right. Yeah. Have you been thinking that Harry Potter is not cute enough? Well, yeah. we have a new game coming from the app called Mischief in Diagon Alley. A frantic race to prepare for Hogwarts. I guess you're going to run around and get your school supplies. This is actually hits too close to home because you have to run around every August, September, buying up school supplies before they get too expensive or out of them. Well, anyway, there's a shortage. That's the thing. Yeah, so, so there's yeah, also inappropriate items. This just seems like a pretty quick game. It's 15 minutes, oh, wow. 15 dice. I'm interested in this one. There's also a pretty good chance we'll play this on the dice hour at some point since it's from the op. But I actually, I like yeah. this art. 
Yeah, it's very cute. I do they, like it too, yeah. They up the cuteness to 11 on this. It's, it's <laughs> adorable looking. You might even say adorable. Well, even though Mike is out right now, he still did the news for us. And you know that because our next thing is about Merchant's Cove, which Mike loves. And there's a bit, a big box expansion. Merchant's Cove was a game where each person is playing a very different game, their own little section game that then combines into one big game and four new playable characters. Okay. Um, they have not done a release thing, but I'm assuming it's going to go to some sort of crowdfunding. That's actually a pretty cool cover. I like the color palette on it. Yeah, it's really neat, and it's a little wagon being pulled by a cute dragon-like creature. Very cute. I mean, it's not Harry Potter cute, but it's cute. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, we got a new game coming from Pegasus Spiel called Kuzuka. I hate that name so much, but this is from Leo Calavini. Man, that's two strikes. And it's uh, two to <laughs> you, six. You are a mean man, sir. I, I, I'm i sure Leo Calavini is a really nice guy. And there's a couple of his games like Vabank that I love a lot. But for the most part, not a huge fan. Although I, this really looks a lot like his game Atlantis. Yeah, he's a, he's a track lover. He's got uh, Cartagena. And then Atlantis, he's done a few games that are all about sort of following a path. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say, know. I'm looking it up on Board Game Geek, it doesn't say it's a reprint of Atlantis, but boy, that sure looks that way. Um, and, and with this game, if you want, you can play Candyland as well. No, you're you trying can't, to but escape you, out of a <laughs> zoo. Like Actually, what's this other escape? What's that game called? What's the, the other one? one? Cartagena. It's, Cartagena. Yeah. Huh, I don't know. It might be good. I like I like the board and the cards. I think that looks cool. I don't like the cover that much, but the everything else looks pretty cool. That Those lion, are by the way, a little if you do creepy. A zoom in, a zoom in on that lion's face. That is pure nightmare juice. <laughs> that's a that's a wise old lion. He's smoked a lot in his life, though. I He's know. a chain smoker. And definitely um, you, when he roars, he coughs afterwards. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Holy Grail Games has a new game coming called Railroad Madness. Z, I know you're in for this one. It is a real time dexterity and train board game. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> 18X, no. All right. I, I'm actually a little interested. You're just moving trains on a track as far as you can, and you're going to push or flick your trains across the tracks. Flick. Uh, <laughs> what? I don't okay. know. This is done by the um, one of the creators of this, also designed the pirate board game, Pirate Tunes, which is a really funky game in which you're flipping a board, um, and Dreams game, and then the other guy created the other designer created the game Potomac. I don't know that, but who knows? I do like Holy Grail games. They make some good stuff. So yeah, and the, yeah, and the yeah. production looks pretty cool. It it sounds like something that I could really like or not. You know. It, <laughs> And yeah. Z's gonna hate just straight out the gate. I might love it. That's the thing, but I I doubt it. Doesn't sound like my kind of thing. But if nothing else, it sounds very much like its own creation. We'll see. We'll see. All right, we have a new announcement from a game called Atlas Lost: Rise wow. of the New Sirens. Yeah. Wow. Now this. Now this. When that's I saw a... this picture, I'm like, oh yeah. Then that just that's all we have really is this picture. We don't have too that much is... more. That's an amazing cover. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's a tech tree resource management civilization game, um, and uh, you're going to combine three of five available techs. They do different mechanisms, and you're trying to score 30 points. It even sounds interesting, but yeah, you're right. That's a cool cover. I guess we'll find more about this. I wonder if it's going to Kickstarter. I don't know. It's from Tactical Games. I want to see what the rest of it looks like. You know, I want, yeah. to, like, I want, I want my hands in that box. Okay, well. Hey. All, All right. right. Well, Ooh. these folks didn't have enough money, so Exploding Kittens has decided to make zombie kittens. 
and blah 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 whatever it's zombie kittens i mean uh, let's let's not pretend it's anything other than it's going to be some spin off of exploding kittens which i actually don't think is a terrible game um it, but yeah it's a game it's a game with a market this is a game with a market and they're going to make a lot of money on this again Absolutely. what do you mean they're going to make <laughs> Again, on this new oh, one, okay, they're yes. going to make again a ton of money. Is it going to this be on is Kickstarter? The seventh again? version of Exploding Kittens. I don't think I don't know if it will be on Kickstarter or not. There, that might be. Who knows? It might be direct to Target or something. They have yeah. a lot of their a lot of this company's stuff is in Target. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Joan of Arc, another name for the Orleans Draw and Write. Um, it's um, this is a. The original game was a bag builder, and now we have a roll and write. Basically, not a roll and write, now... a draw and write. Yes. You got to get it right and right. <laughs> <laughs> that cover is tremendous. Woof. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She looks like um, just a shapeless bag i mean i'm confused as to what i'm looking it's but like a she weird can castle. Write her name without looking at it i know but it's like a, a head going into a tower like a, clearly that's a castle that's brick <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh well and then well, like a a, a, a a chamois thrown over that some sort of sham wow <laughs> okay come on now you're gonna make these people feel bad all right anyway it's another all right game okay. yawn um, next, we have Plant It by Phil Walker Harding. This is coming from Buffalo Games. It is a really pretty game, uh, a very light game. And good news for you all, if you're wondering how this one plays, we're actually playing it live here in the Dice Tower next Tuesday. What? So, nice. I got to tune in for that. Is Buffalo Games the maker of, like, Nuclear War? I mean, those... That was Buffalo. That's Flying no, Buffalo. No, 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 no. That's Flying Buffalo. Right, sorry, Buffalo sorry. Games has been around for a while. They kind of dipped. I didn't see much of them for a few years, but they, they for a while, they made a lot of party games. In fact, Faces was one of their party games back in the day. Yeah. Imagine If is probably their, if. Yeah. Their, their best selling party game, I think. But they did a lot of party games. They're now kind of branching out. And I've only briefly looked over the rules for this one, but it looks pretty fun. And this All is right. already available in Target. Well, not at the Target I went to. I was excited. I went to Target this week. I was like, let me go see what new games they got, because they usually have a slate of new games in June. But either our Target didn't care, or I went too early, which happens occasionally, because there was nothing. Or, Ken or Kenny's kittens. been there also. Oh, Kenny! All right. Micro Macro, Crime City, all in! So I believe this is the third game here. Um... This is a big Where's Waldo style game. If you never played it, won the Spiel des Jahres last year, and you just look through there and find find a crime that's been done. I really like this. Last year they came out with Full House, and this is the third of the line. I don't know that there's any difference here really, other than it's just another game in the series. Uh, because looking at that picture, it looks pretty much the same. I mean, I think that's fine. They could keep publishing these for 20 years. Yeah, I mean this. Yeah. this Big seller, and they, you know, they they can, as you said, can keep doing this. They're just going to create different little objects on this very hard to find, you know, paper. So yeah, this is a great thing. In this box, all the crimes are equestrian themed. That's the main difference. <laughs> You're killing horses? Come on! Somebody stole a horse. A horse killed some guy. You're going to find a horse's head in your bed now. Oh, all right. A Village, a very popular game that came out and won the Kenner Spiel in 2012 uh, from the Brants. Uh, there's a big box version coming from Eggert Spiel. I will say the reaction to the artwork, especially of the game board, has been quite mixed. Quite mixed. I mean, a lot of people are screaming about how much they hate it. Since hmm. I'm not a huge Village fan, don't care. But um, our resident, Chris, did not care for the art. And then he made me zoom in and look at the board, and I was like, oh, yeah, that doesn't look that good. I love the cover here. I'm assuming this is the cover we're looking at. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I really like that. So I don't know what Chris's beef is. No, it's with the board, not with the cover. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, covers okay, nice. well, let me look at the board. It's disgusting. I hate everything about it. <clears throat> <laughs> Moving I haven't on. seen it, folks. He I'm has kidding. Sex. <laughs> Restoration Games has announced their next unmatched set, which is Houdini and the Genie. I love that name. I love that matchup. I love that picture. I love everything about this. I hope it's good. (laughs) That that does look pretty cool. Oh, that's great. (laughs) All right. Well, this is a great box. I do. Man, I like this. Well, Well, you know, you'll see Z review it eventually. Yes. All right. I'll be on it. This box is great. Targi. What? Tar Targi Targi, sorry. Um, the tenth anniversary is happening, although the game feels older than that. But anyhow, there's a bonus box coming, which is gonna have wooden tokens to replace the good tiles in case you didn't already replace them with the board game geek stuff. Um, then there's two modules with stuff in them and solo mode. I have to say, of any game I don't want a solo mode for, I think this is one of them. Yeah, I'm curious. I'll probably and and if this comes out in English, which I'm not sure if it's, I don't know how that's going to work out or if it's even going to matter. It, it it I guess will matter for the cards. But I'll please. get it probably if I can get my hands on it. But you're right. I'm very you know the bids are it's a little late for the updated bids considering the thing's ten years old and and there are official officially licensed nice bake light bits. The extra stuff. Seems a little meager, right? I mean, six new edge cards, some new action cards, okay, and then solo mode. I don't know, but this is just a little celebratory bonus box, so I guess that's all right. I mean, please tell me this is not the final box. This this can't be. I'm pretty sure it's not. No. Okay. No. I, I mean, this, this I'm looking at this, and I'm like, what? All right. I'm, I, <laughs> I will not talk about it then. All right. So we talk about the Spiel des a lot, and the Spiel des award, the winner of that will be announced soon. It's normally announced sometime in June, but maybe I missed it. Um, well, I haven't missed it, I mean, but maybe it's next week. But they always announce the kids won first. So the Kinder Spiel des Jahres, to the sad sadness of Wolfgang Warsh, who had two of the three cup games, both of his did not win. The other one won. So he split the vote, and Magic Mountain won. So mm-hmm. I I had the the privilege of interviewing Alex Yeager, who now works uh, for Amigo at Origins, and uh, they were all excited about this game, and he demoed the game for me. And it's it's really a cute game, really great for kids and adults could play this too. There's kind of a mode for that. Uh, it's it's gravity based. They won't. They won't. This is said every single time. You're like, adults can also play no, this. Never with, happens. Well, with their kids. No, no, I mean, this is a great game to bring out with your kids. That's, oh, okay. Oh, no, no, That's no, no, no. different. It's not a game that you and I would sit down and play. No. I mean, maybe once to see the... It's 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 a cool thing. It's gravity. The the, the marbles start at the top, and they stop when they hit the witch. The you witch you had goes. me at marbles. Yeah. It's, you had it's, me at marbles. It's a really clever mechanic, and you, you could play it. You could gamify it so to speak there is levels to make it a gamers game i doubt it's going to be a popular gamers game but it's i check this out it's if you a get kid's a chance, game get this. um i will say it was the only game of the three that was a, like an original design the other two were riffs like quacks and co was riff off quacks of quedlingberg and also clever was a kid's version of um that's so clever so right. This is the yeah. only one that's kind of a new one. And I'm kind of glad for that because, you know, this, that's like sequels winning and spinoffs. I don't mind that. Also, Wolfgang Warsh, you have enough stuff. Anyhow, mm-hmm. although I did play the I did play Quacks and Co. Uh, last weekend with my kids, and that's an enjoyable game. All right. Tabletop Tycoon is now distributing Rock Manor Games, best known. Well, I don't know what they're best known for, but recently known for Lawyer Up. Um, so, um, oh, I guess it mentions things here. Set a watch, maximum apocalypse. So yeah. there you go. All right. And then two fairly big piece of industry news. Yep. The first is Funko bought Mondo. Now, interestingly enough, this is weird timing because Mondo just, I don't know, six months ago, they and Restoration Games were working on Unmatch together, but Funko now just basically, I mean, not Funko, I'm sorry, Mondo. Mondo licenses, licenses the, like the licensed characters that 
Restoration uses, but they right. no longer are selling unmatched. Restoration has complete control, but otherwise that would have been interesting because Funko owns Funkoverse and they would have been almost buying their competing line because Funkoverse and Unmatched are often compared. Mm -hmm. Restoration Games has announced somewhere, it says in here, that this does not affect, this is unaffected. So Unmatched will not be affected by this sale. And Mondo recently had announced that they were kind of out of the board game business anyway. This does give Funko, though, a lot of licensing power by getting Mondo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I spoke to Justin Jacobson about about the whole relationship, and then uh, Mondo just feeds the IPs now, so that he can create, he can control the release cycle. He'll put out, you know, stuff without like IPs on it, and stuff with IPs on it. He'll go back and forth as he's creating the unmatched releases. Um, I think this is going to be great for Funko because they'll be, you know, they already started, they already have licensed stuff. They just came out with or coming out with the Jurassic World game that was on Kickstarter. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a really good thing for, for Funko. All right. And then the biggest news of the week by far is Backer Kit is now getting into crowdfunding. So Backer Kit was the first well-known pledge manager for people using Kickstarter. Since Kickstarter's pledge manager sucks like terribly, and they've never bothered to even remotely make it better. And if you're from Kickstarter watching this, I've already told you this several times, and you know it. And I've said for years that Kickstarter should buy Backer Kit and use them. And I was like, why did it didn't happen? Well, that's because Backer Kit's now going to go head-to-head -head with Kickstarter. Now, they're not the first company to go head-to-head -head with Kickstarter. Indiegogo did so to not great success. Indiegogo's main income now comes from running campaigns post-Kickstarter. You're done with Kickstarter, you can keep running your campaign on Indiegogo. GameFound is going up against BackerKit, uh, but GameFound is being very specific. They are working only in games, which is the number one thing on Kickstarter, but Kickstarter has a lot of stuff. BackerKit is doing everything. They are straight up going head-to-head with Kickstarter, and not only that, but they're flexing as they come in because their number one project, the first project they're gonna have is from Seth Wolfair, the miniatures for Gloomhaven, and they listed like 30 companies that have agreed to work with them, including Restoration Games, including um, uh, Worldly Gig, uh, Thunder Leader Griff, Games. Leader Games. If they had just said Seth Wolfair, I would have said, that's a serious maneuver. But to bring in Leader Games, who makes Root, Greater Than Games with Sentinels of the Multiverse and uh, Spirit Island, Thunder Griff, um, man, they are not fooling around. This is a very impressive launch. I was really surprised that none of this leaked out before nothing. they made the announcement. I heard nothing from anybody. So, so I, I, again, at Origins, I, I was speaking to Justin Jacobson, Restoration Games, and he said, we've got this big announcement that's happening on Monday or Tuesday of this coming week. I'm like, you don't want to announce it at Origins? He goes, that nah, we can't. It's a big announcement. You'll hear about it soon. And when this came out, I was, yeah, I was blown away. GameFound has already stolen, air quotes, 15% of the game uh, games off of Kickstarter. Now we have a third company, and they've announced all of these fairly significant companies who are putting major IPs there. So Restoration is putting their next return to Dark Tower. You just mentioned Settle Affair is, um, is putting um, their minis for for Gloom, Gloomhaven, right? Yeah. So amazing that, that they've got all these people simultaneously to agree to, to move to their platform and bring all their big IPs. I, I'm really surprised. I don't... It's almost like I don't know that we need a third one, but you know, it's it's it, now nah, like competition's good. Competition is great. That's where I was going to say competition's great. It, it makes everybody better. I'm very happy to see this. It's now Kickstarter. Who knows? Could be the the worst place to run a game, or or the least good place. Maybe I mean, you know, what I'm saying because they've got so many there's so many negatives about using Kickstarter. This might be the the right place. GameFound might be the right place. It's it, it's going to be a very interesting story unfolding over time. Yeah, we're going to watch this and see. Um, I, I went and looked all through their site. They have a nice kind of kit, but they one thing that they ha I was looking, they kind of have dates for a lot of this stuff, but it's really spread out. Even though they have all these companies, they're like leader games or what? I don't remember. I don't 
remember which, but they're like, oh, this is coming Q4 of 2022. Oh, we're coming early 2023. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's going to be similar to GameFound because GameFound kind of stretched theirs out over a year before they open it up to the public. I backer kit, but backer kit also has a really great end user experience. When backer right. kit is part of, uh, part of a happy because it's so easy to jump in and out. Right. It, it, yeah. I mean, this is just going to be a, a real win for gamers. I'm going to, I'm going to put it that way. I think for anything you, it's going to be, it's a going to hopefully be a real seamless front to back working with one company right through to the end. I, I, I can't see a negative about this. I'm I'm excited to see. And oh, by the way, their their, their kind of launch is right at the when when companies do their most uh, project launches, right early in the year. The January and February March timeframe is like the prime launching time. So that seems like when everyone's going to be putting up games. Hopefully, we don't have too many games all at the same time just because of this. I think that's going to be interesting to hear. All right. Hmm. We'll have to wait and see. It's going to be interesting either way. I don't think GameFound is excited about this. But oh. at the same time, I think Kickstarter is probably, they've got to feel this at this point. They, they've got to sit there and go, you got to make some changes. you got to make your end user experience. I mean, will this finally persuade them to build a better pledge manager? I mean, hmm. they've got the money. You've been taking 5% of every project for the last so many years. Kickstarter is so big. I mean, it 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 is tremendous amount of money that they make, and the fact that their their platform looks like a, a bulletin board from like the '70s, if you know what I mean. It's just it's just badly done on every level. Um, but they became because they were first. Why they didn't pump millions of dollars into building a robust platform that has a great user experience? No idea. So uh, I, I think they could become the again the number. Th two after after this is all said and done well we're gonna wait and see i mean even yeah. though this is a strong backer kid has to now prove itself like this is a great thing this is like a you know when these there's a lot of big companies though that have shown up and said we're starting an alternative to facebook that didn't work right you know that's happened before so that doesn't mean it's gonna work sure. uh, by the way i'm looking for people to add to my google circles uh, but uh <laughs> I, my, I, I need friends on uh, MySpace. No, no, that's that's a different scenario. MySpace was first. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm circles, talking about. Yeah. I got I'm you. talking about things that tried to be a competitor from a company I thought could do it, and it just didn't work. No, nope. so work. who knows? I I hope it does because it's good for the consumers. Anyway, all right. <laughs> Let's but keep wait, going. We, that's the news. But, but, 